Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of August 19th. Now I'll begin this forecast by talking about a recent NASA press release about the sun's magnetic field flipping. Nobody needs to flip out. It's not the end of the world. Now you can think of the magnetic field as like an internal timekeeper of the sun, very much like a pendulum is to a grandfather clock. And it's just like a pendulum, it swings very slowly and steadily. And as it reaches the highest point, it reverses direction just like the magnetic field in the sun reverses direction. And as it swings out the other way and reaches the highest point, it reverses direction again. Now when the pendulum reaches its highest point, that's solar maximum at the height of activity. The bottom of the swing is solar minimum. And you might notice at solar maximum, it looks like the field goes away when it flips, but it doesn't. That's just when the field is its most complex. You can think of it as like a magnetic lava lamp of sorts. There's all these little magnetic polarity bubbles everywhere. But the cycle is slow and steady, it takes about 11 years on average from one peak to another. And that means if you're 44 years old, you've already lived through four reversals. So don't worry, everything is fine. It's just the sun going tick tock. And now for my latest forecast. If you've been paying attention to your space weather this week, you'll remember this gorgeous coronal hole that sent us some high speed wind and left some unsettled conditions at Earth. Now, if you look at our stoplight chart, we only have one period of storm time conditions. The rest was unsettled, but it was enough to give us some beautiful aurora. This is Matthew Moses in Minnesota. We have John Wellings sent this picture in from Wisconsin. And if you look at Whitehorse Yukon, it was absolutely stunning. John Tucker posted this gorgeous aurora photo. And as we turn to the solar disk, you can see it's just a buzz with activity. There is an eruption off of the southwest limb. We have a filament eruption coming off in the northeast here that was huge. And if you wait for it, there's the M3 class flare that just made it everything spectacular. Now, as we take a close look at that M class flare, boom, there's the flare right there. And you can see there is a lot of plasma that seems to be escaping. As we take a look at 304 angstroms, you do see all of that hot ejection plasma leaving the sun. So there was a coronal mass ejection associated with this event. Now, is it earthward directed? So as we switch to coronagraphs, here's out to six solar radii. It all looks like it's going southwest of us, even out to 30 solar radii. Again, it doesn't look like much of a halo. It looks like it's all going southwest. And when we switch to our solar wind prediction models, this is Enlil, top panel density, bottom panel velocity. It looks like it's going to the west and the south of us. But there's something that gives a hint that we might be more than just grazed by this ejection. And as we look into the future for this week, this is synoptic charts of the entire sun showing all of the active regions. The east and west limb bracket the earth field of view, and you can see there's a lot of activity on the far side that was just rotating into the earth field of view, so the east limb is a buzz uh, with activity. Now when we switch to our disk view, you can see here, here's spot 1818 where that got that beautiful M3 flare, and there's a lot of other spots that are just beginning to develop. So 1824, 25, and 26 are new growth, so there's a lot of activity. And as an example of this growth, Here's region 1818 as it transits the disk. You can see there's a lot of growth and a lot of mixing between the black and white. And when that mixing occurs, you start getting gamma delta configurations, which are very dangerous. And that's why we're seeing the flares that we're seeing now. So for this upcoming week, we may see a few more M flares from all the active regions that are growing so rapidly on the sun. And also on the 20th, we may have more than just a near miss from this coronal mass ejection. As you can see, I'm gonna put my fingers right at the dimming regions. That's the foot points of the CME as it, as it leaves the sun. And that shape is a horizontal slinky. And because it's horizontal, it might actually give us more than just a near miss or even a glancing blow. So I'm not ready to say that we're not going to see anything from this ejection. And one last thing, this is a beautiful filament that's just about to erupt on the sun. And we're watching it very, very closely. And if this thing goes, then we may have a very exciting week in space weather that's shaping up for us. Thank you for watching. I'm Tamitha Scove.